after a completely action-packed 2015 Formula 1 season, it has to come to an end here in Abu Dhabi. But let's look back at the season to date. Could Kimi Raikkonen have won the title had his amazing form at the start of the season not tragically ended at Bahrain? Vettel also had a real chance until both him and Ferrari seemed to be nowhere after Spain. Ferrari's command in the Constructors' Championship just dropped, and so did Vettel's and Kimi's genuine charge for the driver's title. After that, it was Lewis Hamilton's charge for the driver's championship. Even if sometimes it was the strategy that went in his favour, rather than his raw speed as we saw in Austria. Again though, fortunes changed at Silverstone with a Williams win as they put their authority on the Constructors' title. But then the tables really turned. After a shocking 9 rounds thus far for Nico Rosberg, boy did he turn it around with the 10th. And so the stage was set, Rosberg, Hamilton, Bottas and Massa all vying for the title. A Williams 1-2 at Belgium also helped with Williams's ever increasing chance at a Constructors title. Rosberg retiring in Singapore and Massa's sudden drop off in pace after Italy can be seen as defining moments for when their championship charge just crumbled. Russia saw a Bottas win and Hamilton amazingly taking second from Rosberg. So the battle was set. USA helped the likes of Rosberg and Massa, but it wasn't enough. And neither was a win for Valtteri Bottas at Mexico, which sealed the National F1 Championship for Finland. Obviously, alongside Kimi Raikkonen's not blistering, but very consistent top half finishes. Then you got Lewis Hamilton, and whilst not having the most glamorous season, steeped in race wins, reliability and consistency were on his side when they weren't for Raikkonen, Vettel, Massa, Bottas or even his teammate Nico Rosberg. So finally, last time out, a Bottas strategy error cost himself a shot at the title today along with a Mercedes 1-2 which also completely killed off Williams' dwindling hopes of taking the Constructors' trophy. So with all of the championships sorted heading into Abu Dhabi, that means that this race is a chance for the guys lower down the field to make their move. With Haas entering Formula 1 next year, Renault most likely taking over Lotus, and managerial changes at Manor, Graham Lydon leaving the team and indeed John Booth, um, you, that's it, you're saying goodbye in Abu Dhabi, what can you tell us? Yeah, uh, well Abu Dhabi will be my last race in Formula 1 with, uh, with the team and um, you know, I'll be sad to leave the paddock, we've got to know um, a lot of good people here and you know, made a lot of uh, really good friends and, and colleagues as well. You know, the reason should stay internal to the team but you know, the thing I'm really happy about is, you know, a year ago now the team was in a really, really bad Place, both financially and, and obviously emotionally with, um, with Jules's accident which, which overshadowed everything actually. You know, the thing I'm most proud of is the fact that the team's still here and it's in a position to, uh, to race. There's a lot to play for if you want to enhance your driving career. Maldonado, Verstappen, Hulkenberg and Stevens finishing in the top four at Monaco will certainly get their names flying around the paddock. NASA also having a highly impressive debut year in Formula 1 after being in 4th place in Spa until that all went away. On the other side of the coin, this race will be another research and testing day for the struggling McLaren team. Yes, uh, it was a lot closer to sort of P15 than I thought, I thought we were like half a tenth or 0.8 of a tenth. I, think so. I still don't know how competitive we will be because deployment is obviously a big issue here. But we'll give it a go and we'll see what we get. And in terms of um, conditions, are, are you hoping that rain falls? Does that help you guys? Is yeah. that what you need? Anything. Anything helps us. and uh, It does, you know. Now with all that to one side, let's line up for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix as this wonderful 2015 season draws to a close under the day-to-night conditions at this remarkable racing event. Okay, so hey guys, and here we are on the grid for the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix, the last Grand Prix in the 2015 season. Now, why are we Will Stevens for this race? Well, one, he hasn't had enough series time in the spotlight this series. 
Two, there's no guarantee he'll be on the grid next year, so this could be a good farewell race for him this year, or we could try and see if we can prove his worth to be at Mana next year, and see he made a name for himself at this exact race last year, and it's his anniversary of when he started his Formula 1 career, so the lights are going out for the second Abu Dhabi Grand Prix for Will Stevens, and the lights are out and away we go. There's a bit of smoke at the back of the grid, that is probably us, because... It's tradition this series to get off to a smoky start. Now, diving up the inside of both McLarens, we're alongside with one McLaren, and now we're alongside the other McLaren, that's Fernando Alonso, who's just ahead of us. But Alonso's run out wide. Okay, so Alonso is now running in last place, behind his fellow Spaniard, Roberto Meri. Now, we're going to try and get, see if we can get past Button, but we've got past Button and the Force India. There's also a Lotus there. And now, right up behind the Toro Rosso's Verstappen. Are we going to go up the inside of Max Verstappen? Well, we're side by side of him, but surely on the back straight, we're, there's no way we're going to be able to keep up with him. We're ahead of Roman Grosjean, as the Lotus we are ahead of. Slipstream, can we get the slipstream on Roman Grosjean to be able to just dive it past him going into this corner? And just about we're able to make the move on him. We're now behind Perez and Naza. So we're up into 14th place, and considering we started in 20th place, and we're in a manner which has got no pace compared to the rest of the field, this is a phenomenal start. Putting it down into standard mix. Perez and Naz are having their own battle further up the field. Although we caught up rapidly to them. I don't know how we've done that. It's probably because they're side by side. They're actually touching there. But I, we're not close enough really to be able to make the move. They're still side by side. This is phenomenal battling. We've got Verstappen who's looking to make the move on us. Hasn't quite been able to do that. Now Verstappen and Grosjean are battling behind. Now has Naza been able to secure 12th place from Sergio Perez? I think he just about has all those. Perez is going to take the place back. This is insane battling. I, I, I feel honoured to be behind this battling, although Nazar has now pulled away from Perez. And we've gone down the inside of Perez, running out wide. So, shouldn't really be a legal overtake, but the game didn't give us a warning. We're going to take it. So now coming on to lap two, and we've got Sergio Perez directly behind us, down the start, finish straight. Now, you know what that means. He's going to use the Mercedes power unit to blitz past us as he just has done and we're not going to retake the place surely not late on the brakes and we've got the inside line and we've got past Perez that's great stuff I have no idea how we've been able to take the place on Perez that's phenomenal now coming on just a lap or two later this isn't a replay this is later on now Perez has got past us once again a exactly copycat move now Verstappen's also looking to make a move will Verstappen get past us now, Perez, what's he doing? Perez has just stopped. We've been able to maintain our place, but Perez has just stopped out on track. Has he got a car failure? Well, that's entirely possible. We'll look at that in a second, but three abreast going down the second DRS straight. We've got Grosjean, Verstappen, and Will Stevens all in the line, although Verstappen's got past us. Has Grosjean got past us? Yes, he has, so we've lost two places there. And we got the other Force India of Nico Hulkenberg directly behind us now. So let's find out what happened to Sergio Perez now. Just stops out on track. That is remarkable. I've no idea why he does that. So he stops out on track. He was forced to the outside and waits for everyone else to go past. That is very, very weird, to be honest. But anyway, coming on to lap four. 15th place. 15th place. In a manner, that's phenomenal. But we got the other Force India behind us. Again, another Mercedes power unit car. There's no way we're going to be able to defend that. And he's miles ahead of us already. And he's got DRS. Surely we're not going to take the place back. There's way too much of a gap. And we have a little think about it, but way too much of a gap to be able to realistically take back the place. So Hulkenberg's in 15th place. Will Stevens is in 16th place. I'll say it time and time again. 16th place in the manor is pretty good. I and mean, we've got DRS and Hulkenberg, but on even with DRS, we're going about the same speed as Hulkenberg. That tells you the power deficit we've got. And we are kind of pretty screwed this race already, to be honest. We've, lo we've lost places left, right, and centre. We're now up into the 12th place, a record high place um, for this race. 12th place right up behind Felipe Massa. That is quite an achievement, but. Of course, that's because loads of the front runners have come into the pits for their first pit stop. Although, that is one good thing, actually. We seem to have a tyre wear advantage over everyone else. But then again, if all of these guys were in Q3, of course, then they've had to do some laps on these tyres before getting to the race. 
Now, Button's looking to make a move down the inside of that hip, and now Button's side by side with us, and even that Honda power unit has actually got a power advantage over us. Slight, slight, but he has. And now we got Alonso directly behind us. There's Sergio Perez. Perez has come from last now, and look, he's been able to make some places out of nowhere. And Button, Perez, we're going side by side. Button spun out. Perez and Button, the former teammate, safe, had a little bit of a clip together. And illegal overtake on Perez, that's because I overtook Perez under yellow flag conditions when Button spun out. So we've had to give back the place to Perez. I don't think that's very just, to be honest. So we're going to dive bomb Perez there. And of course there were yellow flags, but... Uh, I feel like, I just feel a little bit cheated from that to be honest, but side by side, three abreast into that corner and Button spinning out, so that's ruined his race, but we saw Perez came from last to right back in the foreground with us, and Perez has jumped us in the pits. The Mana team have held us behind Perez, I don't know why they couldn't just let us go, they had to hold us up, so we're now behind Perez, so... Well, that's it. That's that's game over, lads. We're, we're not going to get past Perez. We're now in 19th place, where we belong, really. But both McLarens haven't pitted yet, so we've got to watch out for them. Although Perez is going very slowly at the pit exit. And we're going to go around the outside. He broke very early as well, though, actually, maybe we broke a bit late. But we're up into 18th place. Grosjean in 17th, so we're not going to see Grosjean for the rest of the race. Now, Max Verstappen, he's right up behind Nico Hulkenberg, so... What's Verstappen going to do? Is he going to do another typical Verstappen overtake like we see him do? He's got a front right puncture. And he's got so much of the lap to go. So, well, he's got to do a long, long distance on only three wheels, essentially. And that means we may well actually overtake Max Verstappen. Right, okay, so he's going to be stuck up behind us once again. We've got some cars coming out of the pits. There's Fernando Alonso. Are we going to maintain our advantage? over Fernando Alonso, he's done two laps more on his tyres, and he's ahead of us, well this isn't good to see, Fernando Alonso has been able to jump us and pit strategy, are we going to dive up the inside, no there's yellow flags as well, that's restricted us, is that yellow flags for Max Verstappen, I have no idea actually, because the yellow flags have been withdrawn straight away, and Fernando Alonso is still just ahead of us, now we have got DRS, but we know that McLaren is terrible in a straight line, but so is the manor, surely, we're not going to be able to take the place back, surely not. Especially when we got Perez trying to make a move. We're going to go three abreast into this corner once again. Is it going to result in a McLaren spinning out? There's Mary in the background trying to get involved in the action. Alonso's now backed off. He's now lost massively out of that. Lost two places. That's Verstappen. And that's a free car crash there. Alonso clipping for Stappen. Mary's lost his front wing. Amazingly, Alonso has got no damage from that incident. But that's well, there's yellow flags for that, really. I mean, this is going back to where we were. Now, did Perez get past us? We saw that crash happen from Alonso. Now, did Perez get past us? No, yellow flags actually stopped him from being able to think about making a move. So Alonso crashing out was actually quite convenient for us, although it did result in our teammate losing his front wing, so... It's game over for Mary, essentially completely game over. And Verstappen actually, who's now miles behind even us. And now Button was in the pits, and now we're miles ahead of Button. So Button's race strategy at the moment is looking absolutely shambolic if we've been able to jump him in the pits. I mean, and now there's a car coming out of the pits. That's Max Verstappen. You're saying this correct. This is Max Verstappen in 20th place. We've almost lapped Max Verstappen. That's phenomenal. We've almost lapped him. In a manner, we've almost lapped the tall Rosso of Max Verstappen. That's amazing. Now, lap 12, we're still in 15th place, which for Mano is quite impressive. we still got Perez behind us. Perez has not been able to make a move. Obviously, stopping out on lap 4, or whatever lap it was, really didn't help him to us. We got back past Perez again. How on earth we're making these overtakes happen is beyond me. I have no idea how we're doing it. Now... We got a McLaren of Jensen Button now directly behind us. So Button's been able to get past Perez. Is Button going to make the move which Perez hasn't been able to do? Of course, Perez is going to have another go because he's got DRS. He's got Mercedes power unit. Three abreast again, although no, we're not because actually both cars have got past us actually. Are we going to get past Button and Perez? No. For the first time, Perez has actually been able to get far enough ahead so that we haven't been able to get back past them. So Perez is going to pull off into the distance like his teammate did about 10-15 laps ago but 
We've got both McLarens to watch out for, so let's not worry about Perez. We've got Button down our inside. We've got Alonso down our outside. Both of them, though, haven't been able to make the move, actually. So, there we go. We're still ahead of both McLarens. Jets and Button are staying out for an extra lap or two. Alonso's coming in at the same lap as us. Now, hopefully we can stay ahead of Alonso in the pit. Hopefully we can. So, we're putting on the tyres. The McLaren pit crew is very quick and quicker than the Manor pit crew, which has screwed us over once again. So Fernando Alonso is now ahead of us, but we saw what we did to Perez a few laps ago. Can we do the same thing to Alonso? So now, coming out of pit exit, we should see Alonso go very slowly if he does the same thing that Perez did. Now, coming out of pit exit, and we're catching up a fair amount, but we're not that close to him. Although we're catching up a lot, actually. Going into the third corner, I believe this is, and we got past Alonso. How on earth are we doing this? How on earth are we getting past all of these drivers? We're in a manor. We're in a car which is, in development terms, about two years old. How are we doing this? How are we keeping ahead of a McLaren? Alonso's trying to get past us. And again, we're able to keep that advantage on Alonso. How are we doing this? This is amazing. Me. Now, we still got to watch out for Jensen Button, who should be coming into the pits very soon. I believe he's in the pits now. So we're going to see... Jensen Button at pit exit. There he is with side by side with him and he's on the prime tires. Ah, Jensen doing that doing those long for well, doing that long first stint. He's on the prime tires now. He's going to the end on that set of tires. Me and Fernando aren't. We've got to come back into the pits again. So Jensen's looking very strong for this race. But look, our tires have gone. We've got no grip on these tires. We're sliding, under steering. We've actually got a bit of, ugh, bit of a slide going on. Off the curb. The slippery curve. We've gone into the side of Fernando, and we've lost our front wing. All good things have to come to an end, and just had no grip on those tyres. We slid off the kerb, a slippery kerb, and as you're going to see, right into the side of Fernando. Fernando amazingly gets no side pod damage. There's Nico Rosberg, he goes straight past. On board from Jensen Button, you're going to see, we just have no grip. We go all out of shape. We've got no grip, and just the slippery kerb. Send us off. We try and recover it into the side of Fernando. And Jensen's also lost his front wing as well. So we've completely ruined Jensen's race as well as our own. Fernando's got no damage, so he's going to go right off into the distance. And I guess the sort of lucky thing is this. We were meant to come into the pits around this lap anyway. But that is our race gone. I mean, unless we're able to stay ahead of Jensen Button... Which surely, we've always seen cars jump us in the pits. Oh look, there's a Ferrari. The Ferrari's held us up. That means Button's jumped us in the pits. That's the third time in three pit stops this race that a car has jumped us in the pits. That was Raikkonen's fault. Well, I would say fault. Just a sheer coincidence, really. But are we going to get pa back past Button? Now, Button could well be on the option tyres. He's got no reason to be on the primes. And as you can see, Ricciardo's also lapping us. Or Ricardo, I should say. I was told off for pronouncing Ricciardo, Ricardo's name the wrong way. Um, are we going to get past Button? No, Button's got the option tyres. Surely we're not going to get pa past him. Amazingly, we have. We've got the inside line for the hairpin, but Button's got option tyres. Now, as you can see, a couple of laps later, we're still side by side with Button, battling relentlessly. Now, we've got to let Bottas through, got, because Bottas has got a lap us, but no, that is no consolation to Jensen Button. Button's just gone straight into the side of Bottas. Now, did, was Button unawares? I think he was too distracted by battling with us. He didn't look out for Valtteri Bottas, so he tries to rejoin the track after running wide. <sighs> he should have seen Bottas coming. Barton's got no damage there, I don't believe, although he seems to have actually. I think he's got a punctured tyre. Bottas eventually gets past. Now, Kvyat's got to get past, and Button turns into Kvyat. It's a complete repeat of the British Grand Prix, where Button's just going around retiring people on purpose. Now, we got Marcus Ericsson. Is he going to get involved in the crash? What about the slippery curb? He isn't going to spin on the slippery kerb like we did. So what's going to happen to Marcus Ericsson? He's going to retire. He's got a car failure on the last race. That is unfortunate for him. Now this is Max Verstappen. We've got a lot of action happening. This is Verstappen going into 18th place. So Verstappen has taken him to the second to last lap to overtake Merry. That's how much damage was done to Verstappen's race. He's only just overtaken Merry. But we're going to see Nico Rosberg come out of the last corner to win the 2015 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix and end the season on a high. So there we go. Uh, Nico Rosberg's looking very happy there. He's, he's ended the season on a high. Jensen Button, uh, no, not Jensen Button, the other Brit, I mean. Lewis Hamilton's going to end the season in second place. 
So, will we have a psychological disadvantage going into 2016? That is always something to watch out for. We've got to watch out for that. Then we got Will Stevens rounding off the season in wh whichever place he's ending in. I think 17th place, ahead of Button, ahead of Verstappen, and ahead of Mary. Not too bad a season to end, to end off. We were ahead of a Force India. We were battling with Force India's McLarens. And considering we're in such a worse car, that's not half bad. Daniel Ricciardo, third place in the last race. That's pretty good. Ahead of both Ferraris. Ahead of Massa. Bottas obviously getting involved in that crash. is way down in 12th place. Kvyat is in 14th place, which isn't too bad. And then you've got Will Stevens finishing just behind a two-times world champion. That's not bad at all. So here we are on the driver's standings, not really much to talk about. The only thing is though, is behind the top 8 guys of the Mercedes, Ferraris, Williams and Red Bulls, the best of the rest for pretty much all of the season was Max Verstappen. It is now Pastor Maldonado, he overtook Verstappen at the last race of the season. It's unfortunate there, so that means Maldonado against all odds is the best of the rest this season. Whoever would have fought it. But then again, he did win in Monaco. And that's, that's where most of his points came from, was that Monaco win. Then on to the second half of the driver's table, and Nasa and Sainz, at the last race of the season, have jumped Will Stevens in the driver's championship. So, so quite a lot of bad things for Will Stevens to round off the season, but quite an impressive race. Battling with Force Indias, battling with McLarens. When you're in a car that's two years old, that's pretty impressive. Constructor standings, there's absolutely no change from the previous constructor standings. Mercedes obviously won a constructor's championship. Williams was still able to hold second place in the constructor, so that is one positive. Williams able to hold second, that is good. The only interesting thing is that the last race of the season, Tar Rosso overtook Force India. So that's quite unfortunate for Force India, to be honest, that is gutting for them. And then finally, the national championship. Not really a lot interesting going on here. Finland won it ages ago, but Great Britain, which is the country I've been representing throughout most of this series, Great Britain finished fourth, behind Finland, Germany, and Australia. And all of those countries have, haven't got bad drivers at all in there. Great Britain, we had Button in the McLaren and Stevens in the Manor. Considering we finished fourth, that is very, very impressive. So there we go, the end of the season. One title win for the British, one title win for the Germans, and the inaugural national championship win for the Finnish. In the end though, the plucky Brits did alright. It was a tough start, and McLaren's catastrophic downfall from greatness certainly didn't help that much. There was even the odd team working issue amongst us Brits as well. But after that they worked well as a little trio. Even Stevens at the back of the field was able to help his compatriots by holding up Hamilton's championship rivals. But then of course in Monaco, Stevens was able to deliver when no one else could with an absolutely amazing drive. Our home crowd though won't forget about our horrific display back in Silverstone. But at least British management could step it up and Williams were able to redeem something from the day. Williams' surge in performance in the latter half of the season was fantastic, even if the Constructors' title was just a little bit too optimistic for now. But still, Lewis Hamilton won the 2015 World Drivers Formula 1 Championship and he thoroughly deserves it. Button put on a brave face while at McLaren and had many impressive finishes to boot. Finally, Will Stevens. Having made quite an impression exactly one year ago, Who is this He's the new boy, the new boy. A lot to learn for him. A lot, a lot to learn. He has done very well in a few races this year, with such a poor car that's technically two years old. You can't ask for more than that. Will we see Will Stevens next year? That remains unclear for now. But we can at least look forward to Julian Palmer at Renault next year and represent the Brits in 2016. So from all of us on this funny little rock called Great Britain, we'll see you later. <laughs>